Hello, hello, hello. How are y'all doing? Did y'all just enjoy that? Yeah, I get a round of applause. You know, my name is Panama Jackson. I'm one of the co-founders of VerySmartBrothers.com. And uh, thank you. Appreciate that. And it's my pleasure to be here on behalf of the Oprah Winfrey Network to talk to y'all for a little bit about uh, Greenleaf and the shenanigans we see on a weekly basis for those of us that enjoy this show immensely. Um, you just got an exclusive first look at the third season premiere. One more time, a round of applause for that. First look. Most of us black in this room, we all like first looks and free stuff and all that, so you know. I know I was excited. Um, the season premieres, for those that want to know, I know you're getting ready, on Tuesday, August 28th, and Wednesday, August 29th at 10 p.m. on own. So let's all set our DVRs and be ready there with popcorn and whatever else we all like, and some hot sauce and popcorn, you know, all the good stuff. Um, we have a, a wonderful panel for you here today. We have some stars from the show. We have folks to make the show happen, so we're going to get ready to dive right in. Um, please welcome to the stage executive producer Chris Turner Towner. Yes, yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Sit wherever I have to pick, pick a seat. Thanks for coming. All right. Series star Rick Fox. And the character who makes this whole see the, the whole show even exists, Merle Dandridge, okay, Gigi Greenleaf. I, I, I will sit right here. I'm sitting in the middle of the action, excitedly. Welcome you all. This is exciting. I'm, I'm very happy to be here um, amongst these people that help create. Um, star in a show that I know I love, and I'm, I'm, I'm listen, I, I'm going to sound a little bit like a fan while I'm up here, so y'all going to have to forgive me. Um, I jokingly wrote a long time ago that the name of the show could have easily been Gigi Shows Up and Shenanigans Ensue, um, <laughs> which, you know, we can kind of see even in this first episode seems to be a theme that might exist, but we'll, we'll get to that. Um, so we're going to start, we're going to start with you, Merle. Um, okay. The season's clearly in line with being the year of the woman. Um, can you share where we meet Grace at the beginning of the season? Like, where, where is she in this drama-filled season? Like, where is she in life? What's, what's happening? Well, you know, uh, this is the first time I've seen this episode, and it's been a few months since we finished shooting the season. So it was really, I, I had some really visceral reactions to um, some of the things that Grace was going through. And what I'm finding is that we lay a lot of groundwork in this episode for a pretty explosive season. I think you can kind of sense that uh, some fireworks are really about to go off. But for Grace in particular, she has been singularly wounded by, by everything that her Uncle Mac has done to her family, to her, to everyone close to her for so long. And it has been such a... Um, a thorn in her side, such a crippling uh, part of her life for so long that she's kind of in a, a state of uh, renewal, cleansing, finding out what is her path now that she has exercised this particular demon from her life. But has she? PTSD, those kinds of things, the, the, the things that she went through last season are lasting things. And every wound that she has carried si since uh, she and um, Charity and uh, Faith and Jacob were kids, they still linger. And so what is her relationship now since she's been out of the church for so long and now that she has become really part of the family for the first time in her adult life. What is her place in the church? What does she believe? What's she going to do about it? And then how's she going to operate as a Christian woman in the church? Because she hasn't necessarily been leading the, the life of someone who is in the pulpit all the time. You know what I'm saying? You what know you, what I'm what saying. What are you saying, Mary? <laughs> what are you saying about yeah. Mary? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> um, but she... She has to rethink 
what her life is going to be if she's actually going to be in ministry. Do you know what I'm saying? So now she's faced with, is she, is she in Team Greenleaf? Is she actually going to advocate for the family instead of point the finger and, and say, this is what you need to do? Now it's, it's in her hands to try to, to correct, um, make right, fight for her family, for the cohesiveness of the actual unit. Because like they say, um, you'll hear in, in the show, Calvary is the Greenleaf show, you know, every Sunday. And um, what is she going to do to fight for that legacy and make sure that it, it stays put, that her parents stay together? That, and and, and um, you'll find in this season that, you know, getting to know Rochelle, becoming closer to her, keeping the enemy close, and, um, and, and the different ways that she learns to exist now that she is home. And in this particular episode, I saw Grace figuring it out. She really didn't, she's still figuring out, have I gotten over killing my family member? And now what do I do? What am I supposed to do? Um, I've had the privilege of being on many panels in my life. And that was the greatest answer and explanation for the season while telling absolutely not one single thing <laughs> that happens going forward. I mean, that was perfect. That was perfect. I just told you everything and nothing at the exact same time. <laughs> You need to teach a master class on that, because that, that was textbook Smart perfect. Smart Sisters podcast. Man. <laughs> that's coming. Don't play with me. That's coming. That, that, was, really, that was perfect. Man. All right. So speaking about the, the Christian struggles yeah, over bro. here, we got Rick Fox here. So um, I, you, struggles you did, are real. She the struggles did, are real. She did, right. So, so can you share a little bit about what's going on with your character this season? Like, you going to end up in church at some point? Like, are you going? I mean, she, she asked. You know, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Choir well, we, reminds would like to know. <laughs> we all need church, uh, including Darius. Uh, Darius's uh, past, as we found in uh, season two when he entered into uh, Grace's life. But also, more importantly, he's been a part of uh, the Greenleaf and Calvary Church as an outsider, really in, in search of the truth. And, uh, you know, in general, a lot of people enter church in search of the truth, right? Uh, have a lot of questions. Uh, Darius comes from a religious background, but at the same time has lost his faith uh, and is struggling with that return. Uh, and then we see in this season, as we begin, still a, a strong viewpoint about uh, what he is doing in his life in terms of his career, but at the same time, where his heart is pointing is in the direction of grace and that struggle between, you know, love and duty, uh, and how far is he going to uh, really put faith back into his life? Now, the challenge is, will, will he ever uh, again find faith as we all hope to find in our life uh, with something greater, a greater purpose for ourselves beyond a connection uh, to God and, and to spirituality that will you know, make him whole? I think we will go on that journey again this season, and hopefully he gets a little closer, uh, but hopefully Grace and, and Darius get closer. But I think at the core of that, as we alluded to, what is her journey, right? What is Grace's journey when it comes to that prodigal daughter returning home, not only to her family, but to, to God? And what is her true purpose going forward, and how does Darius really pull the focus of that? You know, is he pulling focus or is he adding to that equation? And, uh, and so, as you said, the foundation was pretty much laid there uh, for the season, and it, and it goes forward in the next few episodes with genius on behalf of Chris and Craig and, and everyone behind the scenes. So I'm anxious to hear what Chris has to say as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I hope that um, Darius starts to add more value uh, to Grace's life, but also that he starts to find a purpose in his own beyond just his work. So you mentioned the behind the scenes stuff, and I'm really excited to have somebody involved in behind the scenes because as somebody who is an avid fan of this show, who is like, how in the world, I'm sorry, I had to move this pillow, who's messing my back up. Um, is everything on the table? And I got a reason I asked this. Since this show started, I think we have seen every possible issue, situation, concern that can happen in one possible church. I mean, we got murder, infidelity, we got corruption, we got the IRS in here. Um, I mean, we got homosexuality in the church, like, literally. 
it's like y'all just put up a dartboard. It's like we're going to today, boom, there we go. We're going we're gonna to go ahead and tackle that one today. So as somebody like behind the, behind the scenes and helping craft the, the, the direction of the show and where it's going, like, you know, how do you all decide what you're going to bring to light, how you're going to address it? And, you know, like what's the inspiration there? And, you know, for fun, like what's been one of your favorite parts about crafting this season so far? That's a lot, by the way. Okay, well, um, this is my first season. This is, of course, the third season of Greenleaf, but my first season as executive producer, co runner with the creator, Greg, Craig White. And when I saw the first two episodes, I was like, oh, I love the show, I love the show, I love the show. And so I came to the show this season, top of three, going, why? Why? I want to know more. What is going on with Merle and Lady May? What? Why? You know, how can a mother and a daughter have that kind of relationship, live in the same house, you know, serve the same church? So that's how you develop story. And we're going to answer that question. Stay tuned. Hey. Yeah. And that, that relationship between Lady May and Gigi is, I mean, that's, yeah. it's interesting because I think that, um, like, shows like this, they're very, while there's a lot of drama and, you know, I think if it was a reality show, it'd be nonsense, whatever, but... At the, heart of all of, at the heart of all of it is the relationship between family. Like, family is the core of this show. And how is that, like, how do, how do you all, you all do a good job of connecting, I think. I think that's one of the main, the main reasons why I think this show works so well, is like all the, all the actors on the show connect very well. And you, in particular, like, Lynn Whitfield, I love Lynn Whitfield, man. I, I've loved Lynn Whitfield since, like, Thin Line Between Love and Hate Days. Well, that was, back. so how do you all manage to create such good chemistry on set, like, as, as actors? Like, how do you all, how do you all pull that off? Uh, you know, it's interesting. A lot of the cast comes from the theater, and there's a, there's a mentality associated with that. But more so, it's just that everyone is really invested and uh, committed to excellence. And not only excellence, but the excellence of the people that we play opposite of. And, you know, there have been moments where I have been so tired and... I, and and Keith David will reach, reach across and snatch me up, he, he, and he will he, and he will um, he will check, and and check in, and make sure so that we elevate each other. So it's not just a, a one person scene. We, you know, it's it's a give and take. It's teamwork all the way, and we are so um, uh, lucky and blessed, and it, and the the project itself feels so ordained that we have a responsibility that everything that we do, we must elucidate it to the best of our ability to make sure that people feel represented, that they feel heard, and that we are, are telling these stories. Because I cannot tell you that how often, on a daily basis, people tell me that this has started a conversation that has um, healed a relationship that was broken and that has um, made someone feel like they could talk about something that was previously taboo. To me, that is the goal, that is the purpose, that is um, what we as artists, I feel, should, as I myself as an artist, aspire to do. It is our own ministry. Yeah. And for that, it's not hard to say, I'm tired, or maybe I, I didn't quite get the point of this script, but you, you are going to take care of me, I'm going to take care of you, and we are going to make sure that our audience feels taken care of every single time, and I hope you feel that. Yeah, I definitely think we all, we all get that while we're watching. I want to ask you a question, too. So Charity alluded to this, where she's like, you know, until before you showed up, Mavis and, and Lady May weren't even talking, and all of a sudden, so everything's kind of, you know, again, like I said, Gigi shows up, shenanigans ensue, but I mean it in the nicest possible way. Do you think Grace fit? Seriously, I mean, I do. Listen, we have no show if Grace don't show up and shenanigans on the suit, so. She turns over the tables. Yes, yeah, so, does. I mean, do you think she feels responsible in that way? Like, do you think, like, she was able to kind of roll past that in the moment, but, like, as the overarching, like, part of her character, is that something that you, does she feel, like, at blame for everything that's been going on? She didn't do any of that. She didn't do any of that. Um... Her, her, what she has done was poked a festered wound. Yeah, I, I think, I think that's right. An infection right. that has 
become, com uh, it, it started to stench so badly that it, everything, that everywhere she steps is um, <laughs> an explosive boil. And it's not pretty. And she's not afraid to touch it. She's not afraid to reach in and say, we have to, um, y'all need some antibiotics, don't you? You know, don't, you, don't, you, don't we need to th look at this and heal it and figure it out? And I think she is an easy fall guy for everything because she is not afraid to point it out. But um, no, I, you know, for my part, I'm very sympathetic to Grace Greenleaf. And I, I would say... <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think she is a, a at the core, a good-hearted person um, trying to do right, trying to make it right, and often is tripped by that in the landmines that are the Greenleaf <laughs> landscape. And often she makes uh, questionable choices, and in that, it makes her... <laughs> what? Did you smile? <laughs> she makes questionable choices, but um, in that it makes her very human, you know? And I love a girl. I love her for hum love her her humanity. Yeah. No, I agree. I, and I, I do agree with you. I do think exactly what you said. She kind of, when she showed up, everybody else's, everything everybody else was struggling with or hiding had to come to light because she wasn't going to let anything stay in the dark, even if unintentionally. It's just, you know. But again, we don't you know, have a show I, without that. I think maybe there, that's part of why she was drawn to Darius because that's sure, that's yeah. it, that's his that's his job. It yeah. is your job. It is, and it's what drew Darius to Grace. Uh, the attraction to this unquenchable need for the truth, like in in the and she just gravitates towards it. He gravitates towards it. He turns over to apple carts. He wants to know. He wants people to stand in their truth. And in this world, in Calvary and Greenleaf family, there's so many secrets. There's so much that needs to be, you know, light needs to be shined on that um, he sees in grace a courage, uh, you know, uh, 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 and that's attractive. But at the same time, his, his need to push her and to push the envelope is, is testing her because it's her family. It's her family. And, and so that's the challenge in their relationship as well. It's like, how do they find um, a, a, an ability to be together when both of them seem to need the truth to be the most important thing? And so how does the love kind of rest comfortably when they're both are restless in search of the truth? That's... Yeah. No, you guys... I love the Darius character, because one, he's a man. And, uh, and, and he, he pokes at Grace and, and, and frustrates her, but she has to, you guys are a lot alike in your, in your characters. It's just as far as the truth and really being your own person. You are strong in, your, in who you are, and Grace is strong in who she is, and, and that's what we love about, it is chemistry. We love it. Yeah, yeah. it's fun Agreed to Agreed entirely. All right, so, um, just like a little heads up, I mean, a little uh, preview for the folks. Like, everyone's storylines elevated in, in this season. Um, can you each tease, like, one or two things that we can look forward to from this season, like, from your own perspective that? Uh, well. Hmm. <laughs> um, thinking of Craig, the creator. One, I, I mean, there is a scene between Merle and, um, and Lynn Woodfield that you will be just rewind, you'll be like, oh, wait. <laughs> and a uh, lot of information there. And of course, the Rochelle uh, Bishop storyline is, is quite amazing. Your relationship, quite amazing. <laughs> I think we're gonna, uh, you're very, very, very strong as to the point of you're not changing for uh, Grace. Right. And, I, I, and how much will you change? For Grace, uh, I think that's, that's going to be a yeah, lot. That's the challenge, right? That's the uh, challenge. What will you do for love? Uh, and you'll get more hypocrisy, which will test both of them. Uh, you'll you'll uh, get some good cop, bad cop, because remember, they, they are in search of the truth in general, the two of them. 
Uh, so they'll be coming together, so they'll be pulling apart. And you have that investigative nature, your character. Right. I go about it yeah. quite differently than Grace is going about it, right? I don't have the tie to the family quite yet. I'm, I bring a hammer, right? I, I'm ungraceful about the need to know. And, and, you know, and I carry her secrets as well. So I have to obviously protect her. And so where's that line, right? How, how do I continue to hold back what is, you know, which is my life's purpose for love, but at the same time, at what point is the truth, does she need to step into the truth? Yeah, but. <laughs> 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 that, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm on season four already. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, uh, for, for Grace's part, it, the, the struggle it, it, of, um, feeling like she found somebody in her life purpose with the journalism and, and seeking the truth and wanting to find justice and all that kind of stuff is directly in opposition with what she's trying to find in her faith and her, and her family's call. So, I mean, for me, for my part, for Merle, I found that really interesting um, dissonance in the drama for, for that relationship. But, yeah, we, we have similar life goals, but, but I'm, I'm trying to do this God thing. Are you going to come? Are you going to come? And I, I think that's a really real struggle that, uh, you know, y'all find yourself unequally yoked. Anybody? Um, you know what I'm saying? Um, but what's also interesting about Grace's journey is the, the new phase of motherhood that she's going into. Sophia is starting to um, deal with bigger issues, bigger life problems. Her faith, her um, uh, whether or not she she believes anymore and, and also the struggles that she has and she's growing into an adult woman as well. So it's a different kind of parenting. Also the relationship with Lady May. Um, there, Chris wasn't lying. There's some, some drama about that. You always wonder what is the thing between them, right? What is it? And I think you're gonna get some satisfaction and, and you're gonna find some, some, some stuff in there, and uh, like, like Keith likes to say, the juice is definitely worth the squeeze on that one. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's good stuff. R really quickly, uh, th there's so much more to Greenleaf than Darius and Grace's relationship, but I just have to add, I think her journey to her faith and her purpose is I think also a way back for Darius to find his faith again, right? But at the same time, you are the company that you keep. And your actions and your defense of those actions tell us a lot about what we're willing to stand for and what we're not willing to stand for, right? So at some point, you know, there's a stance that I think comes in this season, in this relationship, but I think you guys will tune in and, and wait to see. Yeah. He sound like he the moderator over here with the, the closing quotes and stuff like that. All right. Nah. Um, I do want to say that in from, from, from a consumer and viewer standpoint, like that is one thing that I really enjoy about the show in general and what you all have created. And I've had the pleasure of seeing the first episode and perhaps a little more than some other folks have seen. But, um, but, but um, the journeys that everybody, every character seems to be going on are very, Charity specifically, like she's got a whole journey that she's going on. But the kids, like everybody involved in the show is going on this personal life journey together and apart at the exact same time. So it's really interesting watching those things unfold um, and how a family as big as they are that seem to all amazingly fit inside this house. They gotta have like 47 rooms. Um, I've, ne I've never understood that. I really, I I've never understood how everybody in America can fit in this house, by the way. Like, I have Real had talk, debates. Though, that mansion is enormous. It has to be. It has it's to be. It's enormous, and everybody, there are so many suites. It's just so beautiful. So, and Wait, the grounds, it's really that big, in like real life? It's like, it's really? Okay. Enormous. It's re so, that's yes. not just it's, like it's a Atlanta. picture and all that? It, it's, okay. it's, you know, it takes place in, the show takes place in Memphis, but we shoot in Atlanta. So, so that's, okay. Can y'all tell me whose house that is so I can um, <laughs> try to roll up on them at some point? It's, it's Miss Rebecca's house. Um, uh, a little trivia about it. Uh, it was built by this son who uh, wanted to do something really wonderful for his mother and built it very much to, to 
the, even down to the little bits, uh, to her specifications, and she passed before she could move in. Oh, no. So no one else is allowed to live there, and, it's, and there's a sign that said, welcome to Miss Rebecca's house, and they use it for parties, for functions, you know, for that kind of thing, but no one actually ha has bought it or anything. But it's, and it's a special place to us. They treat us like family when we go there, and we have a wonderful time every time we go there. Wow, so, wow. Well, that is... It's very sweet. That is a very sweet piece of trivia. Stop trip making fun can... of the house. I, I, I'm not making fun of it. I'm amazed I'm by kidding. this. I, I really. Yeah, it's like it's like a clown car. Well, you know, like I, I just always assume. Well, yes, but I always assume that you know that was like the facade somewhere. But the interior, y'all were not filming the in the interior of this house because I was like, there's there's no way one house can fit this many human beings in it with this much space. But that's 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 actually amazing. So you just changed my life. All right, and you actually ended a debate I've been having with some of my friends for quite some time. All right, so before we get to some audience Q&A, um, yeah, we're gonna, get, we're gonna let the audience ask some questions up here. Um, one last closing question for each of you in, in one word, can you, what's one word that you would use to best describe this season? Let's start over here. Ooh-wee. <laughs> it's a word, it's a word. That's your word? It's a word, it works. All right. The other couch. Gosh, I, I, mm. One word. I mean, fireworks for sure, but um, what? Fireworks, that's a word. That's a word. That's a word, all right. That'll preach, okay. It's cold, man. Um, the journalist on the show yeah, struggles yeah, no, for a word. The thesaurus, dang. But yeah, there's so many there's so many worlds within the world, and there's so many to. So I guess I, I don't want to give it away. So um, just um, uh, oh man. <sighs> do, 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 yeah, no. Do, do. <laughs> I. It's hard. It's hard. Happened. It is hard. I, that, it's I kind of a loaded question. I, know I, no, I got loaded. one more word. You see what you get? Woo wee! That was like. She's a writer. Can I give a sound? Oh. I don't think you're gonna see any storyline and not go. Oh, that's real. Real. Mm. Authentic. Yes. There you go. Authentic. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> you stole my word. Thank you, Chris. All right, um, we're gonna we're gonna throw to some uh, some audience questions Q and A. I think we have mics that are gonna come around. So um, this young lady here threw her hand up. Is before I even said it's audience Q and A time, so she's ready to go over here. Um, dear black people, let's ask questions. <laughs> yeah, I know what y'all talk about, and then we're gonna move over. Y'all know y'all know what I'm talking about. When we ask questions that are really mostly statements. Well, okay, you know. Dear this, black people, this, let's ask this some questions. This my show. All right. <laughs> This is my favorite show. <laughs> and uh, one of the things that I was, uh, I was like, felt like I was on a cliffhanger with was what happened with Lady May and her relationship with her father and all that. There's like a pus for you there, Grace. <laughs> That's gonna be popped, I'm sure. <laughs> but I, it kind of was like left like a cliffhanger. Is something going to uh, evolve or erupt from some of that? Wow. Uh, you gave me a good idea, and I'm going to leave it at that. There you go. All right. Um. And Hello. We're from Canada. We love your show, too. And I wanted to ask, do you participate um, in any part of the writing in terms of the script and the direction of the script as actors in terms of the storyline? Like, do you contribute to the storylines? I would say that our producers are extremely generous to keep us in the conversation. And that doesn't always happen. That is a luxury and that's a blessing that they're interested in how we live and breathe the characters. Um, and I can't tell you how many 5 a.m. or 2 a.m. conversations Chris and I have had just thinking it through, figuring it out. Where, you know, where, where are we? Where, where are we going? What's happening? And, and um, to be a part of that is a, a creative heaven. It, it makes me, it, you make me feel. Um, 
<laughs> seen and heard. No, um, that was good no, but she it, sold it, me on that one. It I does give us a lot of a lot of uh, uh, ownership over it as yeah. well, which um, also helps in the in the playing of of the story. Now, listen. There's we're in the room, and there's you know someone something will be pitched, and I'll be like, Merle's not gonna feel that, <laughs> <laughs> or or Merle is. So no, it's. It, we listen, and it is incorporated in the scripts, definitely. And that is a very generous thing. We, right here, I think. Thank you. Thank you so much. So first I want to tell you the storyline is absolutely authentic. I'm a pastor's daughter, so every time I see this, I'm absolutely riveted. Uh, it, it resonates me so well. So my question to you as the writer, how do you... Uh, how, or, or as the executive director, how do you um, make these characters so authentic? How do you create that storyline that is so real that someone who's actually experienced it from the, the women in the church trying to sleep with your father and then, and, then, and then I left the church for quite some time just because of my issues of, of, of just being in this fishbowl and just so many different things. How do you make it so authentic and to the, to the actors, Grace, or your character, Grace, how do you draw on those different, like, real-life experiences to make it seem and feel so real? I'm just going to quickly say, for, uh, for Merle's character, Grace, I just always go, what does she want? What does she want? And, um, and then, of course, good writing is always going to, something is going to conflict, come into conflict with what she's trying to do. So, you know, I know who the character is as a person, what she stands for, and, and I need something to conflict with that, whether it's her parents misbehaving, brothers and sisters mouthing off, boyfriends not uh, saying Friends, what you want to hear, plural. being difficult. So, um, you know, that's, that's how you craft a story, honestly. Grace has been messy. She sure has. Um, I... I in, in any building of a character, you, you have to have done that homework and know exactly what their perspective is, exactly what they've been through, where, where they're coming from, where they're, what, as Chris said, what they want, what they're trying to do. Um, but my experience growing up in the church and being, um, my, my family is 100% is in, in the Memphis black church. And, um, and it, so it, I felt very familiar as soon as I read the script. And I, I had a sense of, of, of where she was coming from and what she was doing. Um, and then just to be in the playing of it, because everyone else has done so much investigation and um, deep character work as well, that when, when you come up against those other characters, it's not, it's, it's not hard. All you have to do is, is listen and be present, and it's, it just crackles, because the writing, it's on the page, and then it's in your, your uh, co-worker's eyes. And the, the, the combination, and then a lot of great artistry in, in our crew, and how they make it come together, and, and you elucidate a wonderful story. So it, it means a lot to me that it rings true to you. So thank you for that. Yeah, that's, that's amazing to hear. Um, I agree with Merle and everything that's been said uh, in terms of Chris's point. Of, I mean, it's on the page. When it's on the page, you know, it, it connects, especially with the characters we, we embody and we serve. Uh, you know, I have my own. I can empathize with your, your challenges. I was not a son of a, of a pastor, but I grew up in the church. And, and the noise that can surround a church can distract from hearing the message and what you're there for, right? And so you Ooh, can actually so run true. away for just a, a silence, just so that you can maybe find what you really need there, right? And that's a connection to God. And, and so my, you know, Darius's journey is no different than my own. Like I'm trying to find my way back. And, and so, you know, when, through this character, I get to explore where that, that lack of faith, where it died, how do we find it? Is it through someone else that I get there? And at the end of the day, you know, it, it's tuning that, it's just tuning in again, right? It's because it never left. It's there, it never left. And so. Preach. Oh, no, no, no. no. I mean. So that's, that's what we get to do. We really get to live in this world and, and get a lot of answers for ourselves, but also serve, hopefully, a conversation that's bigger for all of us. Yeah, yeah that's, that's good. good. That's yeah, good. that is. So this question is for Rick. 
Um, I, I'm curious. Can you see me? I don't, I don't know if I have to stand up, but um, you've had two successful careers. I mean, I know you from the Boston Celtics. And so I'm curious, what have you... Um, <laughs> the Lakers batted more. We're, we're in Massachusetts, so you have to, you have to, the you have to, show, oh, sorry, sorry, you have to sorry. acknowledge the, the start, right? Sorry, sorry. Wait a minute. Yeah. I, I have to acknowledge where he started, right? Yes. You were here. So, anyways, um, for me, I was curious what you learned the most in both careers, and what is the greatest connection for you personally to the character you play on Greenleaf? So thank you for that question, it's, it's great. Um, it, for those that only know me as a Laker, I did. I was drafted by the Celtics, and so I had my, I had my foundation here, uh, but went on to, to be, a, you know, to be a, a, cha a champion with great teammates in Shaq and Kobe and Phil Jackson and, 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 and LA, and it's where, I, where home is for me now. And, and the thing I've, I took away and learned uh, for myself personally is you know, find your team. Like find find your team, find find your teammates that really are serving something greater than their own individual agenda or your own individual agenda, and, and be of service. You know, and and in in both cases, I I failed miserably in Boston in pursuit of championships because we did not have that common focus and common goal to to something greater than our own individual achievements. I got to L.A. And I got to be, I got to see and be a part of something that was greater than myself. And that has carried on for 20 plus years since I've been, well, 14, since I've retired. Uh, this is what I am a part of today. I'm a part of a team with, with amazing creators behind the camera, in front of the camera. I have teammates that carry me when I have nightmares the night before because I don't think I'm enough. And all I know that I need to do is show up and be of service and try to make the team better and, and play my role in something that's greater than me. And so I just constantly remember to be open-minded, bring an open heart, and be open to change because sometimes the story changes. Sometimes we change in, on the fly in the middle of, of, of the intensity and we have to be there for each other. So that's what the championship experience looked like. I'm a part of a championship experience here and that's because I'm on an amazing team with amazing teammates. I suit up, I show up, and I play my role in the orchestra. And thank you all for receiving us and continuing to support us. Well, that is, uh, we don't have any more time for any questions. That is as good a place to end as any. That was a, that was. I'm gonna watch the show. I, I hope you watch I'm gonna watch the show now too. I'm gonna watch great. it again. That was great. So um, if we could give a round of applause for all of our participants on stage, Rick Fox, Merle Dandridge, Chris Turner-Towner, and make sure you tune in to OWN on uh, Tuesday, August 28th, and Wednesday, August 29th for the two-season, the, uh, two two-episode premiere. Um, thank you all for coming out. <laughs>